What's up everyone, Andrew Bainey here, and on today's video we are going to be taking a look at the brand new product from Submission Audio, which is the Umansky Bass plugin for Contact. This virtual instrument was done in collaboration with Jacob Umansky, who is the bassist of Intervals and has also been the bassist of a ton of other really cool projects over the years. But before we get into talking about all the specs and features of this plugin, I always like to show what it sounds like in a full demo mix, so we're going to do just that. I'm going to be playing through a short song that I wrote in Drop E on an 8-string guitar with the Umansky Bass plugin going on in the background providing all the low end. This is how it sounds in a full demo mix. Now that I've shown you what this plugin sounds like in a full demo mix, we're going to talk more about all the specs and features of this plugin and go over a bunch of sound examples as well. So first and foremost, as I mentioned earlier in this video, this plugin was done in collaboration with Jacob Umansky, who of course is the bassist of Intervals, which is an awesome progressive instrumental band. This plugin basically takes hundreds of samples from Jacob's personal bass, which is a Dingwall Z3X and essentially lets you program your own bass lines using his tones. The plugin has four main tone settings, which are the DI, of course, the direct input of the bass, the clean setting, the grit setting, and the heavy setting. For the full song that I just demoed, I was using the grit setting because to me that one sounded the closest to how I would normally make a bass tone. But the nice thing is, of course, you got that DI function, so if you wanna use your own tones or create your own tone, you can just have the DI coming out of the plugin as well, which is very cool. So basically every single fret on Jacob's bass was sampled dozens of times, so you're not gonna have to worry about hearing the same sample played over and over and over again, which is usually what happens when you get programmed bass that sounds very robotic. So that kind of helps alleviate a little bit of that problem area. And last but certainly not least is the fact that you can also change the tuning of this instrument. So of course, as you guys know, I like to tune uh, stupidly low and this plugin is capable of going all the way down to C0, which would basically be nine string guitar range. So you're probably good to go no matter how low you tune. So there are a ton of features in this plugin. We're not gonna go through every single one because this video would be way too long, but I will be talking about the ones that I was using primarily in that full demo song. So by default, the plugin is basically gonna be doing a finger alternate picking style. So doing that thing on the bass. Um, but you can of course switch the articulation, which basically means how your virtual basis is playing. So I did a lot of that in my demo where I'm having it switch between alternate fingering, slapping, ghost popping, uh, hammer-ons, slides, a ton of different stuff. We'll go through all that really soon. Um, and then also what you can do, which is really cool, is you can force the virtual bass to only use specific strings, which is really cool because another thing that makes bass sound really fake when it's programmed is it doesn't really know where on the fretboard you're wanting to play the riff. So basically with these force key switches, you can essentially force a certain section of the riff to be played on like the E string, for example. So instead of worrying about uh, it automatically picking between three different strings, you can make sure that it's playing all of the frets on only the E string. Okay, so before we move any farther, I'm just gonna play through a section of that song again, but with only the bass, you can hear how it sounds like so. Okay, so we'll stop there. That's basically the intro riff, which repeats two or three times. So I have a couple of main things going on here. So number one is I'm forcing the plugin to play specific strings. Because when I play it on guitar, I'm primarily playing the E, B, 
A and D string, um, whereas by default, as I'll show you, if we get rid of those switches, it's gonna jump all over the place. So if we get rid of these force key switches and watch the fretboard, you're gonna notice that the frets are jumping all over the place. Which is obviously never how someone would play that riff because it makes no sense. Like you're not gonna be jumping from the first fret on the high string to the open E, like that's just not a thing that people would do. So basically if we put those key switches back, which are up here on the um, F sharp nine key, basically we can force it so that it's using the specific strings I want. So again, now that those key switches are back, if we play it again and take a look at the fretboard, you'll notice that it's playing the riff properly as to the way I was playing it on guitar. So yeah, that's one of the coolest features which helps make this sound a lot more realistic than some of the other uh, available plugins out there. And the second thing that is going on in this intro riff is a few other different key switches where I'm switching from finger alternate to a few different functions such as hammer-ons and pull-offs as well as some slaps in there. And if you look near the bottom here underneath the riff notes, there are these other switches, and if you look in the articulation section of the window while I'm just kind of hovering around these keys, you can see it switch. So by default, it's always gonna be finger alternate, but as you hold down different keys, it's basically, basically gonna change the articulation. So for this riff, it was primarily on finger alternate. However, certain times I'm forcing it to hammer on and pull off, and a bit later in the track, I'm also forcing it to be a dead note, which means, you know, it's not actually playing a fretted note. He's kind of just slapping the fretboard, if you will. Um, so again, pay attention to the articulation section of the window, and I'm gonna play it one more time so you can see how it alters as the MIDI key switches come into play. So yeah, just like that, you can add a ton of feeling to your programmed bass so it's not just all gonna be alternate fingered the entire time, which is not how someone would actually play it. The other cool thing about this is if you're like me and you actually do have basses and play bass, you can also throw in a bunch of techniques that you might not actually know how to do because I am not that good of a bassist. So with this, I can add in lots more slapping, popping, ghost notes, a bunch of things that I wouldn't be able to do myself, which is also kind of cool. So before we move on to some of the other features of the plugin, I just wanna highlight this section of the song because this is where I decided to go really crazy and add a ton of key switches that are just all over the place. As you can see, there's a lot going on here, so I'm just gonna play it. Pay attention to the articulation window in particular because it gets a little crazy and it sounds like this. So it's probably pretty extreme, but I really wanted to push this plug into its max and I thought that the riff that I came up with sounded pretty cool. And by the way, this is also a good time to mention, how do you actually know how to do this stuff? Well, within the plugin, if you go over to the settings window, this is where you're gonna find all the information on the key switches. So as you can see here, we got finger alternate, finger index, finger middle, dead note slap, dead slap pop, dead pop, etc., etc. And you can basically see where to program each of these functions. And that is how I knew how to program them in my piano roll. And likewise, on the right side of the key switch map, you can also see where you can force the B string, E string, A string, et cetera, et cetera. And then on the far right, you have the bass tuning window. In this section is where you can tune the bass instrument. So in my case, obviously, since my guitar was in drop E, that is also what I tuned the bass to. The only thing that is a little confusing perhaps, which you have to keep in mind if you are changing the tuning, is obviously if you change the tuning, the key switches are still going to say force B string, E string, A string, et cetera, et cetera. It's not actually gonna tell you which string you're forcing in terms of your tuning. So really you should just keep in mind like this is the sixth, fifth, fourth, third, second, and first string would make a little bit more sense to your brain rather than actively trying to translate like, oh, the B string is actually the E and so on and so forth. It's not that confusing, but just something to bear in mind and maybe the, you know, maybe submission audio might wanna change that or something like that, up to them. And then real quick as well, like I was mentioning earlier, you can also switch the different tones. So there's DI, which is the direct input sound. There's clean, 
grit and heavy. So again, the DI one is cool because it basically will give you a direct input of the bass and then you can use whatever other plugins or real amps or whatever you want to really shape your own tone if you're not feeling the ones that are included. Um, we can just play that again really quick from the beginning on the DI setting and maybe I'll cycle through some of the tones so you can hear how they sound. <laughs> So that's the DI. Of course, it sounds kind of weird because there is literally no tone. So you'd obviously want to apply more to that. Let's move over to the clean tone and listen again. Okay, and then the grit tone, which is again, the one I was using throughout my playthrough. And last but not least, the heavy tone. You also don't need external plugins to kind of mix these tones. Within reason, there is also this mixer window where you do have a little bit of control over the tone. You can control the drive, the tone, the compression, and the girth. Um, so yeah, if we kind of cycle through those real quick, if we go to the grit channel and turn them all off, I'll just play around with it while we go through that riff again. So you do have a little bit of control within the plugin if you don't have external uh, plugins to mix on the DI. You do get a little bit of control, although honestly when I did my playthrough video, I left the grit tone completely stock because I thought it sounded good as is. Okay, so that's pretty much gonna do it for this video. If you're interested in picking up the Umansky Bass plugin, go check out the link in the pinned comment or the description below. It is available now through Submission Audio. I also wanna give a big thank you to Submission Audio for sponsoring this video. This plugin was a lot of fun to play around with and I think the tone sounds pretty awesome. Also, of course, wanna give a big thank you to all my Patreon members whose names are on the screen at this point in time. If you're interested in audio downloads, stems, guitar tabs, or a shout out on the screen, you can find all of that over there. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.